everybody. Your coach Borino with you for another jumpstart session. This one's gonna be a lot of fun. I think you get a lot of value of it. You will enjoy it, get inspired and pick up some ideas. Today, I'm gonna talk to my man, Jim Rogers. Jim has been in the business for about three years now. He was on one of my live webinars and sent me an email. Uh, but rather than me just reading it to you guys, why not let Jim introduce himself and tell you a little bit about himself and the question he posed. Unfortunately, we ran out of time on the webinar, but I decided to do a quick jumpstart with him to answer his question and through that question share with you some tips and ideas that will help you get more good leads, pick up more listings and become a good solid listing agent with plenty of commissions, good listings and a good lifestyle that we always talk about. All right, with that, Mr. Jim, welcome to the Jumpstart. It's good to have you. Thanks for coming forward and asking such a good question. How are you doing? Doing fine, thank you, Barino. So give me a quick rundown. You've been in the business for about three years now, right? Where do you sell real estate? Where are you, Jim? Um, actually, it's been it's close a little uh, over three and a half years. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I got my license uh, was about my first year with uh, Keller Williams here. I am in the Dallas area. Okay. okay? Um, I would say that uh, the th in the three and a half years, I've had about twenty two. Uh, close transactions. Uh -huh. However, every one of those 22 transactions has been with buyers. Okay. okay. I have had, not had a listing yet. Um, actually, you know, the whole process just, I'm, I've been trying to absorb as much information from you, mm -hmm. um, some other coaches on, uh, you know, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it is, to say this, uh, to say the least, uh, a little overwhelming. Me. Like so much information, and it's like, how do you go about? You know, what is the proper steps to take in order to have a successful uh, to set, have a successful transaction? And I know most of that from what a lot of people have told me that if you don't exude that confidence level, mm -hmm. and it, they will be able to determine whether you have that or not. If not. Uh, there's going to be a slim chance that you're going to get that listing. Okay, right. so a big, a, a big question is how do you develop trust mm -hmm. for them to be able to uh, want you to list their house versus somebody else? Because if you don't have the trust, you might as well forget it. That is true. That is a great insight. Okay, so let me break it up into smaller pieces, and we're going to take it piece by piece, and I'm going to walk you through it and uh, help you. At the end, my objective is for you to feel more confident, know how to feel confident, know what, what it takes to be a successful listing agent, and how to get clients to build that trust and connection with them. Are we on the same page? Is that a good objective that we want to achieve? Yes. All right, good. So, let's start with being a good listing agent. Why is that even important? Well, as Jim said to you guys, you can make some money being a buyer's agent. The problem with this is, Notice that all the agents in your office, in your area, everywhere, my clients, who make more than two, three, four hundred thousand a year or more, I have some making over a million, all have buyer's agents. None of them work with buyers. Being a good, successful agent means you're a good listing agent. That's, it's simply as simple as that. Working buyers will drive you crazy, it will drive your business to the ground. It's not a sustainable, profitable business model. And especially new agents often fall into this trap of easy commission, easy money. We've all been there, trust me, I was there at the beginning, until you learn the hard way or you don't learn and quit. That's why over 80% of the agents never make it in this business, which is both good news and bad news. Bad news is you may be one of them. Good news is you're probably not because you are here learning. So now, don't work with buyers with only three exceptions. Your sellers who are moving up, People who want to buy one of your listings or a direct referral, somebody you really trust, somebody who trusts you, have a good close relationship, you know they're serious and they're ready to go. Other than that, you're going to focus on listings because just like Jim said, good listings will naturally, organically generate good buyers for you. With that being said, how do you become or how do you transition into being a solid listing agent with a high level of confidence, with a high level of connection? Well, there are four parts to that equation. There are four moving parts in that that need to be in place in order for you to do that. You were talking about confidence and developing connection with people. One of the core qualities, one of the four things you must develop is your ability, your knowledge to understand and know the market really well, inside out. It's one of your core competencies is to know 
What are homes going for? What is something unique about the certain neighborhoods? How long does it take to sell a property? What is unique about specific properties? How long, uh, how, how long ago were they built? All that stuff that determines the market value of a certain area, of a certain home, that determines the desire for that home, you must know that. It would be just like a chef must know how to cook. It's one of those core competencies. Does that make sense? Yeah. So knowing the market inside out is one of the core competencies where some of your confidence will come from. How do you develop it? You preview property daily, you study market daily. That's it. Daily you're going to preview active listings, what new properties that hit the market. You go see them. Pending transactions. What went under the contract? What is selling right now? Anomalies. You're going to hit a property. Has that happened to you? I'm sure you probably you've seen it where neighborhood is selling for 350,000 and all of a sudden there's a property that sold for 390. You must know why. What makes certain properties unique? Why there's a fluctuation in pricing? What impacts pricing? Schools, safety, crime, convenience, all these things you must understand. Why is that important? Because you may get in a conversation with, let's say, for sale by owner. And rather than shoving down their throat and selling them on you, which is most, most agents do, you will simply establish your status and your expertise indirectly. Let me give you an example. You're speaking with a for sale by owner and they say, well, Jim, how about that house on Oak Street around the corner? And you say, oh yeah, it's a little smaller than yours. It's four bedroom, three baths. It's been on the market for 77 days. They're having a little hard time selling it because I think it's slightly overpriced. They have a smaller backyard than, than yours. However, they have a three car garage. What did I instantly established? I know the market really well. I know what I'm talking about. I'm knowledgeable. I'm an expert. I can be trusted. I don't have to say any of those things. They're encapsulated in my quick overview of knowing what's going on. Now, it's not that hard to do. You simply study the market, you preview properties, and you go out there and you're in touch with what's going on. So that's the first part. You establish your core competency. That's where some of your confidence will come from. The second part, Jim, is you establish good communication. Be a good communicator. So let me, as a matter of fact, let me write it down. I'm going to put it in the red on our big board. So what does it take to become a good, successful listing agent who gets a lot of good listings, sells a lot of properties? Where well, first is the market knowledge, becoming a market expert. Market expert. I will one day learn how to spell. <laughs> Expert. E-X-P-E-R-T. So that's number one. Expert. Now the good news is it doesn't take that long. Probably in 30, 45 days of studying the market, going out there every day, previewing properties, you're going to know what's going on. You're going to know your neighborhoods. You're going to know the pricing. You're going to know what's selling for how much, how long does it take to sell and all that. So that's one. Two, communication. Confident communication. That's the second important area. So that when you do get into conversation with somebody, you speak with confidence, you know what questions to ask, you know how to answer their questions, and you know how to control the conversation. How do you develop that? Study number one, study programs like My Core Influence. Do you have the Core Influence, Jim? Do what? The Core Influence program. Uh, no, I do not. I would recommend you get it because the, the whole program is about how to develop this ability to have a confident communication with your prospects, with your clients. Why is that important? Because no matter what kind of lead generation systems you have, whether you do open houses, chase expireds, go after for sale by owners, or do online, it doesn't matter. There will come a junction, a point where you have to have a conversation with the prospect that will turn them, hopefully, into a customer, a listing, and a client. During that junction, you will be evaluated, not consciously. Most of it happens subconsciously. But just like Jim was saying, I need to feel confident. What does that mean? Your confidence, your expertise, the trust needs to be established. And much of that is established by the way you communicate with, with your prospect. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So part one, you study these materials. Not that hard. There are some videos in the program. There are other videos. You can watch my videos on YouTube. The resources are out there, so just study them. The most important part, and I'll give you a little secret about myself. I don't have a special talent. I don't have any special abilities. I, I was an immigrant from Czechoslovakia with a horrible accent and zero knowledge about real estate. That's how I started. And I was watching these successful agents, you know, they wear nice clothes and they drive nice cars and they're having a good time taking a bunch of listings, making money, playing golf on the weekend while I was chasing deals and showing buyers and, and being a desperate broke agent. But what I noticed was all of them, without exception, were good communicators. So I figured in order for me to compete with them and get some of the business they were getting, I need to master the same skill. Practice. 
daily. It's one of those core things you must work on every day to really get this down. Now, here's the cool part. Once you get this down, once you really, it, and it's gonna click, it, it will take you about 30 days of diligent practice. My recommendation, do it 30 minutes a day. It'd be just like you wanna learn how to golf, you wanna learn how to play tennis, any other skill. You would get somebody who would show you and teach you, and then you would just practice and practice and practice. So my recommendation, Jim, for the next 30 days, open your calendar, and for 30 minutes, block out practice time. This can be with your spouse, which my spouse had to <laughs> suffer through it, play the role of a grumpy seller. This could be another agent. This could be one of the rock stars on our private Facebook group. If you're not a member, post there. I see people once in a while post requests for a, a role play partner. Who it's going to be is not that important. You can even do it by yourself, worse comes to worse. But get someone who will be as committed as you to do this daily, every single day for the next month, next 45 days, and watch how quickly you can improve. A, a lot of times my problem is I talk too much. Okay. Uh, okay, I talk too much, and I have a tendency to allow others to take control of the conversation. Okay, okay? let me give Those you... Those are probably my two biggest flaws. Uh -huh. All right, I talk too much, I don't listen enough, and I allow other people to take control of the conversation away from it. Okay. okay, I will give you a technique that will solve it once and for all. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Deploy the 80-20 strategy that will solve both of your problems, Jim, and everybody else's. If you have a hard time controlling the conversation, if you feel like you either talk too much or you're not relevant, the client loses interest, this will help you. The 80-20 strategy, here's what it means. 80% of the conversation is done by the client, by the prospect. 20% is done by you. That means if you're a 15-minute conversation with the client, about 12 minutes of that will be done by them. Okay? So that's the first part. Okay. The second part is 80% of what you say are questions. This will accomplish several things. Number one, you will get a lot of insight into their situation. You will discover what's called a core driving emotion. What is the emotion that's driving them? What is the real reason why they want to sell? You will understand their situation and you will be able to quickly determine whether you can help them or not. So 80% are questions, you will get insight. The second benefit to that, it will control the conversation. And it has to do with our neurobiology, with the way our brains are wired. Our brain can only focus at one thing at a time. So the moment you fire off a question, whether they want to or not, whether they like it or not, their brain will immediately lock onto that question and look for an answer. Now, they may choose not to answer that question, they may choose not to engage, but their mind will be engaged. It will be locked into that question. This will help you stay in control. It will be impossible for them to do both. Answer your question and try to gain uh, control of the conversation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, where does the 80-20 strategy, how do you develop it? You practice it. It's a matter of practice. It's a matter of asking the relevant question, whether it's a meta questions, core questions, and there are over 20 in the core influence, the questions you can go through that you role play and practice, okay? So I recommend use those or develop your own, doesn't really matter, but it's the strategy that will help you. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing I'm gonna give you, Jim, is get a recorder. Get a digital As a matter of fact, I have one here, you guys. I'm going to show you on the video. Hang on a second. Jim, you can't see it, but what I'm showing is this is a little digital recorder. Pocket digital recorder. They're like $30 on Amazon. Get one of them. Well, I just, uh, I just wanted to throw this in. Uh, I do have a digital recorder, and yes, I do use it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what will help you? I'm going to give you another one. Take notes. Take lots of notes. Write a lot of notes. I would have a nice leather binder with a notepad in it, and I would take a lot of notes. I would write down a lot of notes. It accomplishes several things there. One of them is, of course, you will remember the important points 
about the conversation, about their situation, about what they're trying to do and all that. And if you prospect massively, if you do it a lot, it's easier to sort out who you were talking to so you can refer to your notes, put them in your contact management system. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is it makes the client feel very important. It makes them feel like you're really paying attention, you're really closely engaged and you re what they're saying really matters. It elevates their sense of importance and value. Very, very important. So from a psychological standpoint, it establishes more connection between you and them. So write a lot of notes. It's very, and especially if you have a hard time focusing, this will help you with concentration. Because to a certain level, we all have that, where we kind of tend to drift or start thinking in our head, what am I going to ask next? How is this going? What am I going to say next? Would you, will I probably get this listing, not get this listing, all that stuff. I shouldn't have said that, I should have said that instead. So taking a lot of notes will help you stay on track, stay connected with them, and you can refer to them as you go through with the conversation. You can go back and say, you know how you mentioned that you guys wanted to be in four months and the house you want to buy is about $350,000 price range, etc., etc. So you can refer to those notes, okay? So do that. A lot of notes. Helpful? Yes. Okay, good. The next thing I'm going to give you is a simple strategy. This is a psychological strategy. We talked about establishing trust and report, and this is a technique. It's just another technique that you can develop. I usually teach this in a uh, workshop environment, in the classroom, but I, I can give it to you over the phone and you guys on the video. When you start communicating with them, let's say you talk to an expired listing, you visited them, you have a good conversation, they're showing you the house. Use the eye color technique. And this is a technique where you look them in the eye and you determine the color of their eyes. And it's a simple little thing but it creates a much deeper sense of connection with them. Now, of course, don't overdo this because you're going to come across as creepy and they're going to kick you out. But if you do this right, suddenly they feel like you're really paying attention, that they really matter. They will feel something very different than just another salesperson asking questions to get the listing. So you hold the eye contact just long enough to see what color their eyes are. It's a very powerful strategy, simple thing. It takes a little practice to get the hang of it. I now do it subconsciously to almost everybody and it's a good shortcut to make the stranger feel more comfortable talking with you. So try it. It's an eye color technique. I'm going to put it on the board. Okay? Okay. Eye color technique. So do that. It's a, it's a cool little thing that notice how different it suddenly is going to feel where you hold the eye contact during the conversation just long enough to see, ah, blue eyes, okay, cool. And they will react to it. You, sometimes you even notice their body changes, their breathing changes, their posture changes. They react to it, people respond, even though it's very often an involuntary response. Okay? Okay. So these are the techniques and strategies where you start. You become a market expert, you work on your communication, you deploy strategies like 80-20, there's a whole bunch of them in core influence ask more questions. Your communication, your dialogue with them should be mostly questions. Use a recorder, record your conversation, take a lot of notes, and use the eye color technique. All right, so that's on a technical side of it. Now, in your email, you said that, well, why don't you, why don't you kind of paraphrase what, what you were talking about, how you feel nervous and you, you feel like your, your confidence is very low because you haven't listed a lot of properties, you haven't sold a lot of properties, so you may be confident as a buyer's agent, but when it comes to taking listings, it's that catch-22, I can't get listings because I haven't listed and sold any, and I haven't listed and sold any because I can't get listings. Oh, that, yeah, that's true. Sure. And, and, and to develop that uh, self-confidence, you have to have done it a few times. You know, like I said, all through high school and college, I was a uh, I was a very good tennis player, uh -huh. and you know you don't get you don't get good in tennis unless you practice. There's just no way. So I get the I, I get the correlation there. Yeah. So how do you become a confident agent, confident listing agent? If you haven't sold any properties in terms of as your listing sold, haven't listed many, is the confidence important? Of course, people respond to it. Absolutely. But again. Is it possible to start listing properties even with zero experience as a listing agent? The answer is yes, absolutely. Here is why. Every single agent who is now a real estate rock star, me, bunch of other agents who now take a lot of listings, started at zero. There was always that one point where you took your very first listing. That's so, right. So uh -huh. where you are is where you are, you know what I mean? The good news is you can become, just like everybody else, a good successful listing agent. There is a path. 
Is it harder at the beginning? Yes, it's a little more challenging, absolutely, but not impossible. This is totally doable, totally attainable. I tell you where you have an advantage, Jim. You already have 21 transactions under your belt. In most cities here in the Dallas area, we got two months inventory or less. So my last, almost every transaction that I've had to date with buyers has been a multiple offer, every and single one. So here you are right that buyers are going to make you go broke because the last guy I had, we had to do it three times. Yeah. Before he got a house. Well, that's the okay. situation right now, Jim, pretty much everywhere. The market is hot as we speak in most parts of North America, US and Canada, where there's a shortage of good listings, there are multiple offers, there's a lot of buyers out there, getting financing is not that hard, interest rates are low. So that's just another market cycle we're in. That means it's challenging to get good listings and get sellers to see the reality. Sometimes they think they own a castle and they, they're unrealistic because they know that good listings are in short supply at the moment. So that's, it's just the reality that is pretty much all across the board. Is it still possible to get good listings? Is it still possible to get them as a new agent? The answer is yes, of course. In addition to the strategies and techniques we talked about, here is how you do it. First, come up with a plan. And that plan, that would be step one, has to have two parts. Why and how. Start with the why. And for you guys, my students, you already know the process. That's the founding block. That's the foundation on which you're going to build your success as a listing agent. It must be a very strong why. Why am I doing this? Why do I want a whole bunch of listings? Why do I want to make money? You will notice as you go through the exercise that it's not even about the dollars. Do they matter? Of course. That's how you feed your family. That's how you pay your bills. But it's way more than just the money. It's the lifestyle. It's the, the freedom. It's the choices you're going to have once you build a successful business as a listing agent. But start there because this will give you the juice. This will be the fuel that will keep propelling you forward, helping you plow through the days where it's going to suck. Help you sh shake it off and dust yourself off when deals do fall apart, when sellers cancel on you, where listings back out, when things happen that normally would some, somebody would get knocked down and never get up. That's why so many agents quit. You stay with it because of your why because you have a bigger picture in mind, because you believe and trust yourself enough to know this is attainable. Other people have reached it. This crazy dude Barino reached it. I mean, if the, the, he could do it, I can do it as well. Use that as your inspiration and that will help you. So start with a strong why. Do a little soul searching and I'm not talking just setting goals. Go beyond just setting goals. Architect your life the way you want it to. Don't try to shoehorn your lifestyle into the income. That's backwards. Do it the right way. And if you are my Listing University student, there's a great exercise I do with you guys where you architect your ideal lifestyle based on how you want it, then you totally it all up and then you build your business around that. That's the right way to do it. That's the correct process. So Jim, start with a strong why. What inspires you? What excites you? What are some of the things, tangible or intangible? If you want a new Rolex or a nice watch, get it. Vacations, income properties, there's a whole bunch of things you can have. That's what other people have. That's what successful agents in your area have. You can have the same thing. It's totally attainable. Once you have your big why, you're going to come up with a how. How do I get there? How do I become that confident, profitable listing agent who knows how to get good properties, who has good listings on the market, makes the money, takes time off, spends some time with the family, but it's a balanced life. You take care of your health, your family, your business, your income, and your future. So come up with a plan. The plan is pretty simple. And that's really the cool part about real estate business. You're in a good business. If you had a, like a car shop or a bookstore or any other business, you have to deal with a whole bunch of variables, a whole bunch of stuff. In real estate, it's only three. That's what makes this business simple. Not easy, but simple. So here they are, the three things you need to know. Number one, leads. That is the foundation of your business. Knowing how to generate good quality motivated leads is the core of your business. That's the lifeline. Without leads, as my mentor, early mentor Mike Ferry used to say, without leads you don't have a business, you have a hobby. So you start there. This is where most agents fail. Is they don't have enough funnels, pardon my poor artistic skills, <laughs> enough funnels that bring in leads on a predictable regular basis. So as a good listing agent, you must have these three or four, three or four systems in place. That's what we're going to do. Are you coming to Vegas, Jim? Are you going to join us for the workshop? Are you going? 
the workshop in January, this, this is what we're going to do in January, is build you systems that bring in motivated leads. So where do you start? Start with the low-hanging fruit, the easy ones, the ones you can identify immediately. You can get on Craigslist and have 5, 10 Fizbo leads immediately. So start there, get some Fizbos, get some expireds, maybe some open house and some referrals. And now you have four funnels. So that's the first moving part, is leads. You need to have systems in place that bring you good seller leads. Even in a hot market, there are still seller leads. If you don't have new experts, go after old experts. Do a good open house once in a while. Some of these people that come through an open house are buyers who need to sell something or there are neighbors who want to sell who live in the area. Then do sphere of influence. Start your networking. National Association of Realtors says one person in the United States knows four people who will move this year. So if you have 100 people on your SOI, do the math. Times four, 400 potential moves. Now let's say 90% of them are no good. 90% you don't want to work. That's still 40 potential transactions you can close from a sphere of influence out of only 100 people. Same thing, you need to have a system. So that's the first moving part in the how. The second moving part is once you're getting these leads, you need to have a second system in place, which is your follow-up system. Because most of the conversions will happen through the follow-up. So you need to have something in place that will start turning these leads into appointments. The best follow-up systems incorporate all channels of communication. Those are the most effective ones. So that means you visit them in person, personal visits, phone, email, mail, and video, and text. So you all, all these channels to have a conversation, okay? So that's the second system. You build your lead generation system and you decide, what do I need to do to get my leads? Then how do I follow up with them? You get a contact management system and you get a phone. Those are the two things you're going to need. And then a car, of course, to visit them. So far, makes sense? Yes? Yeah. It's pretty basic stuff. Now, the third is a listing presentation. That's the third system. Listing presentation. What do you do if somebody picks up a phone and says, Jim, we want to sell? You've been in touch with us. We appreciate that. The information has been helpful. We want to talk to you. We want to move to California. Let's get together. So again, this needs to be a system. And that system consists of marketing. That would be your thank you notes you send out, confirm the appointment, that would be your pre-listing package, anything that the seller receives from the time they indicate they want to sell to the time you get the contract signed. And then the actual presentation. What do you do once you are face to face with them? If you're using the presentation plus I have, just follow it. It's designed to work beautifully. 25, 30 minute presentation, done. These are the three moving parts you must have in place. If you know how to generate leads, if you know how to follow up with those leads, and if you know how to turn those leads into appointments and listings, you have a profitable business. There's no question about it. It's just a matter of scaling it. You open the spigots up here, more leads come in, better follow up, more listings come out. That's how it works. This is the model that every single successful real estate agent follows. What changes is how they get their leads. That's usually where the variables are. My recommendation, especially if you're on a budget, especially if you don't want to work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, especially if you don't want to spend six months setting things up, start with the easy ones. These are the easy ones. These are the ex least expensive ones and the easiest ones to convert. Why? Because they are HPL high probability leads. Because if you talk to 10 for sale by owners, you have a high probability that 60% of them will list within about six to eight weeks. That Those are stats based on my area. Your numbers will be different. But if you just talk to 10 neighbors, let's say door knocking, chances of converting those into listings will be much lower. Same with expired listings, same with fear of influence, and same with open house leads. Does that make sense so far, Jim? Yes. So there are two areas you got to work on. One is yourself. That's the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities we talked about earlier, your confidence, your communication, your knowledge. And the other part is the mechanics. It's your business itself. That means you plan it and then you execute it. Okay? The cool thing about doing the three moving parts approach is that once you launch it, once you push the button, of course it's not going to be perfect at first. But knowing these three moving parts, it's very easy to troubleshoot. So let's just say, Jim, what would make it a good year for you? 
between today and 12 months from now? How many transactions would you like to close? What would make it worth your time? Let's just say 60000 oh, yeah. $60,000. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm just throwing out a number. I that's fine. And that's fine. You're going to rework this and every single one of you have very different numbers. But I just want to show you how this is set up. So in order for you to do one a month, you need to go on 12. You need to have 12 listings. You will need to go on how many appointments? Now, because you haven't taken any listings, I know it's very hard for you to project. So let's be conservative. Let's say it takes twice as many. So it will require 24 listing appointments in the next 12 months to get 12 listings, which will require two appointments a, a month, two listing appointments a month, 24 appointments. How many leads will it take? Again, you don't know the exact number, but let's be conservative again. Let's say you need 10 leads to get one appointment. So you need to generate 240 leads or about somewhere there. And that's your focus. So now when you're building this, you start building systems that would bring, give or take, 24 leads per month, 20 leads a month, somewhere there. So every day you work now, you know your main focus is one lead per day. So how do you transition to be a confident, successful real estate agent, listing agent? You focus on one good seller lead every day in this scenario. Now the scenario doesn't change, the systems don't change, but if you want to bump the numbers, let's say Jim says, well the hell with it, I'm not going to do deal a month, that's not enough. I want to make $200,000, what will it take? You break it down, how many leads, how many appointments, how many listings? The approach is the same, the formulas are the same, because the connection is the same. Leads lead to appointments, lead to listings. That's it, there's nothing else there. You're generating leads, you're following up with them, you're getting appointments, you're taking listings. What's going to change is maybe you add another funnel here or you bump these numbers up because if you want this number to go up, which is your income, you simply bump these numbers up. The more leads you generate, the more money you make. That's the connection with the right systems in place, obviously. Does that make sense, Jim? Yes. Okay. So now you have a plan. Your day needs to be spent, 80% of your time, focus, energy and money is spent now on getting that one good lead a day. Now here's a question. Can every single one of you do one lead a day? Yes or no? Yes. Totally doable. If you work 24 days a month, that's 24 good leads. Yeah. And, and you start here. Fizbos, new expireds, old expireds, working your sphere of influence, and maybe do an open house. That's all you got to do. That's all it takes. Diligently, consistently working those systems. That's the answer. Right there. It's not any more complicated than that. Where do agents get stuck? They don't do it consistently. Here's what's going to happen. You go into hunker down mode, right? You work your ass off chasing fizzbows, going after expireds, working your sphere of influence, holding good open houses. You start getting leads. Suddenly those leads start converting into appointments. Suddenly you get five, six really good listings on the market. Woohoo! Suddenly they go under contract and then what happens? You get busy, you get bogged down. What's the first thing you stop doing? Prospecting. Prospecting. That's the first thing they're going to go. Because you don't want to sacrifice the customer service because you know that you need to get those suckers sold, make sure they pass inspections, make sure the financing is placed, make sure the paperwork is signed so you can get paid. And the prospecting goes bye-bye. No more 24 leads a month. And then this is what happens. The yo-yo kicks in. Right? You have great months, you close four or five deals, make 50, 60,000 in one month, and then famine. Nothing. So you go into hunker mode down here again. Roll up your sleeves, work your ass off. Go up, generate leads, get appointments, get listings. Customer service kicks in. Admin time kicks in, inspections, visiting sellers, getting paperwork signed. You go into a valley again. And up and down you go. And that's so stressful. Why? Because you cannot project, you cannot predict, you cannot plan, you cannot build that ideal lifestyle. Because you cannot depend on a solid, steady, predictable income. Are you with me? Can you relate to that? Yeah, I can. Yeah. You and everybody else, including me, of, of everything I share with you is because I've been there. I experienced all this, including the yo-yos, where I had great months and then I felt like it's time to get a part-time job. So there are three things I'm going to give you that will prevent the yo-yo. Okay, let me just wipe the board. Is it good stuff so far, Jim? Is, is this helpful? Yes, it is. Okay, good. 
Any questions so far? No. No. Okay, good. Hold on. Let me wipe this. So, how do you prevent this? Here is how. So let's stick with the original plan of doing a lead a day. Your primary focus, one a day, no matter what. In other words, your day does not end until that one good lead has been generated for that day. And if it means at 7 p.m. you still have to go visit an expired, you have to make some phone calls, you have to do, do what it takes. Be so committed that not getting that lead is not an option. Because what will happen is, many of us did that, yours truly included, I'd say, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to double up tomorrow. And then you work some tomorrow, but then the transaction that's about ready to close, the title company pulls at the last minute, there's a problem. There is a lien against it or something. And you go into the emergency mode. You put your fireman hat on, you take the big hose, and you're putting out fires. Next thing you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, no leads. So now instead of two, you're down three, and then four. And then it's impossible to catch up. And you're like, fuck, what am I doing wrong? That's what you're doing wrong. Number one priority is I got to get my lead. Do you have to still do customer service and other things? Of course. And I'll give you a tip how to prevent all that, okay? But that's your priority. That's your focus. Your day does not end until you completed your quota. And once you get the hang of it, you realize it's not that hard. There'll be days where you're going to do way more than that. We will come into these windows. Watch this. Between December 25th, and January is an example. There are several of these, but one is coming up. And January 10th, you're going to have a huge spike of expired listings. So to get one lead will be a piece of cake. You're going to get way more than that. What you need to average is whatever average you need per month. Okay? Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So focus on one a day. That's your number one priority. Number two priority is get an assistant. You cannot run your business by yourself on a profitable, sustainable level. If you just want to do deal here and there, and one deal a month, yeah, you can do that by yourself. You don't really need help for that. It's totally doable by a single agent. But once you get the taste of the success, once you start to get the feel for what it's like to get three checks a week and have four or five closings a month, you realize that that's a good lifestyle. That's nice freedom. That's, that's something very different. You start investing. You start thinking long term. You realize it's impossible to do. The moment you start hitting about 25 deals or more, you got to get help. The sooner you get an assistant, the sooner you're going to get to that level. My stupid thinking was, I need to make some money first before I can hire an assistant. And I was like that idiot in front of a fireplace going, why don't you warm me up first, then I'll bring some wood. That <laughs> doesn't work that way. It's backwards. Get help. Delegate all that junk work, all the shit work that still needs to be done, not just by you, but by somebody else. So you can focus on the stuff that really matters. Where is the real money in this business? The money is in your prospecting, talking to FISBOS, talking to expireds. The money is in you uh, following up with existing leads. The money is in connecting with your sphere of influence, chatting with your clients, chatting with your friends, your neighbors. The money is in presenting, doing listing presentations, negotiating offers. That's where the money is not designing flyers and fucking around with MLS and uh, 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 answering emails that you don't need to be answering, returning phone calls you don't need to be returning. That's something can be done by somebody else. About 60 to 70 percent of the tasks and activities you have during the day can be done by a qualified assistant, by a competent assistant. And they're out there. There's skilled people out there who can totally step in and do that for you. So then you can focus on what if you did three leads a day, four leads a day consistently. Imagine having six, seven hundred leads a year. How much of that can you convert? With a good system, you totally are able to convert five, uh, one out of five into an appointment. So do the math. Where can you take this business? That's the secret. You get two people. You get a good buyer's agent or just develop a relationship with a good agent who works buyers. So you don't invest enough and you don't invest and waste a lot of time with buyers. And you get a qualified competent assistant that you personally train. That's it. And then you can take it to 50 deals, 60, 100, 150 or more. That's the path. But you can't get there without help. You cannot do this on your own. 
That's how you avoid the yo-yo. Then the last thing is you plan. So that was number three. You plan. Get in a habit of planning. Let me show you what I use. Jim, you can't see it, but what I'm showing for Zami, mean, you're going to see it on the video, is this. This is called a passion planner. Now, this is just a tool. Don't get stuck on one particular tool. I just happen to like this one because I like to plan on paper. It just works for me if I am able to kind of glance at it, thumb through it, look at what needs to happen, write my notes down, and then I can plan it. It, I really like this better than electronic because I can do my notes in this one. I can, let me show you what my day would look like. Let me find an example here. So it looks something like this. Okay? And there's something committing. You know, if you do it electronically, and Google Calendar is fine, we share it in the office and it works pretty well. But if you do it on paper, there's something permanent and committing of you doing it. How you do it is not as important as the fact that you actually do it. So what I would suggest is 5, 6 o'clock at night, you're ready to close the shop. Before you go home, you open your calendar and you ask yourself this question. What do I have to do tomorrow that is the most profitable, most productive thing that will get me closer to my goals the fastest? What do I need to focus on tomorrow one, two, maybe three things that I will absolutely get done tomorrow that is the most productive thing I can accomplish that will get me closer to my goals. And then just think, what is it? It is not just building a to-do list, but it is doing time slots, allocating time slots so that you know exactly, oh, it's 7 o'clock, from 7 to 7.20, I have my practice time. From 7.30 to 8 o'clock, I have my yoga. From 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, I have calling expired. From 9 to 10, I have emailing for sale by owners. From 10 to 10.30, I have mapping out and preparing my packages to go out and visit expired Fisbos and preview property. Till 12.30, I'm going to be previewing property. 12.30 to 1.45 or whatever, 1.30, I have lunch. And you structure your day. And then it's just a matter of open your calendar. What time is it? What do I have to do next? It will help you hold yourself accountable. Because you know how it is in this crazy business. Nobody really cares whether you win or, win or lose, whether you succeed or you fail. Nobody really cares. It's in your hands. Yes, your broker has a vested interest and your spouse probably does. But those are outside players. It's really in your hands. There is nobody there. You don't have a boss. You don't have a supervisor or a manager who will be looking over your shoulder guiding you. It's all up to you. That's the good news. We love the freedom. That's one of the reasons why you're here, I would imagine. But two, that's also the curse, the blessing and the curse. is because if you don't get shit done, at the end of the day, there'll be no consequences other than your lifestyle and your business suffering. So having your day structured and organized like this will help you stay on track, will help you be accountable, because at the end of the day, you can review your day and say, okay, 80% done, not bad. Did I accomplish my one, two, or three most productive things, MP, uh, MPTs? What were the three things that I had to focus on? Are they done? And if they're not done, your day is not done. Because now your calendar will become your supervisor, your manager. That's how you do this. And then again, you plan your next day and the next day. Now, only one of two things will happen. Either you will be getting stuff done on a regular basis, and as a result, you're going to start reaping the benefits, getting leads, getting appointments, listings, and income or you will consistently see that you're slipping, that you're not on track. But there are only two reasons why you don't stay on track. Could be a combination, but I promise you there's one that's dominant. If you plan your day, not just to-do list, we're talking calendar plan, and you consistently stay off track where you're not getting things done, it's only for one of two reasons. Either your planning abilities suck, you're not good at planning, you think something that should take 20 minutes real, realistically takes an hour or vice versa. So that's one possibility. Improve your planning. Be good at projecting. I need this much time to get this done. The second and more likely one is that the desires and the lifestyle we talked about at the beginning is not pulling you. That means you have a well-planned day. You have it well-structured, but it's not pulling you enough. There is something holding you back, and that something is one of three things. Focus, expectations, or beliefs. And if you have the, uh, the Dreams to Reality book that comes with the Expired Plus, we talk about it in detail. 
there is something deeply rooted in your subconscious that has to do with your focus, your expectations, and mostly your beliefs that you have about success, that you have about money, about your self-image, who you are, what you deserve. So if you consistently stay off track, if, you, if it requires a lot of willpower for you to get going and stay on track, the place you need to look in is what do you subconsciously believe? That's not logical, rational. But that's something deep inside in your heart. What do you really believe about you, about real estate, about success, about wealth, and how to attain it? And you got to clean that up. Now, there are books, there are resources, seminars, workshops. We won't have time or the space today to address all that. But if you just hop on uh, the Real Estate Rockstars on Facebook, this is our private group. We post books and resources all the time because these issues everybody deals with on a certain level. But you got to clean that up. Otherwise, it will require way too much willpower and long-term willpower will never work. You don't have enough energy and enough discipline to just stay with it simply because of the willpower. One more thing I wanted to add to that, especially for you guys who are newer agents. It is easy to buy into the fact that, well, I'm new, most people don't want to do business with me. And I can see how that may be your operating belief. And sometimes that's true. But I will tell you one thing. Sometimes people don't want to do business with you because you're too old, because you're too young, because you're a man, because you're a woman, because you're this, you're that. They can have 10, 20 different reasons, most of them illogical. But you already know that most of the decisions seller make are not logical to begin with, that we operate on emotions and on subconscious programming. So I offer you an alternative and here it is. There are people out there who will not do business with you no matter what you do and what you say. That's just the reality. Be okay with that. Here is why. There are plenty of people out there who will gladly re uh, trade the years of experience, the years in the business, over someone who is friendly, who can be trusted, who is passionate, who is experienced working with buyers. That alone, in your case, Jim, is a great asset. And I guarantee you, every single one of you guys who are watching this video brings something unique to the table. Something that makes you special, something that the people would appreciate about you. A quality that makes you stand out from your competition, because most of your competition, thank God, and most of them are not my students, most of your competition is not very competent. There are many dishonest people, just like in any industry, we're not unique that way. But you bring something. Like one of my first, my very first listing in Downey, California, this older lady who listed with me, and I told her, look, I'm new. I don't have a whole bunch of experience, but I'd rather trade that over some crusty agent, burnout agent who's been at it for 20 years, who takes weekends off, who's not passionate. You want to work, you're hungry. And I like that and I appreciate that. And I'd rather have someone who is this hungry and this passionate over someone who doesn't give a shit about one listing more or less, who has 15, 20 properties on the market who will treat me just as another number. Where if it work out, works out great, I get a commission. If not, no big deal. And she was right. I was very passionate, very enthusiastic. So if your passion, your enthusiasm or special skill or knowledge, or just like your ability to communicate, to openly have a conversation where they can tell you the truth, that sometimes is enough. And I assure you, there is so much business out there. There's plenty out there for every single one of you. All it takes is the right systems, the right approach, some persistence and some skills. But you can have it. You can totally have it. And be okay with the fact that at the beginning it will be nerve-wracking. I mean, my, my first listings, I smudged the ink on the, on, the, on the contract because my paws were so sweaty. So be okay with that. It is what it is. Just Here is the rule. You heard me say it hundreds of times. It is one of the most important core rules that I can give you that will guide you well and serve you well. Do the best you can with what you have. If being nervous is what you got, then go with it. Can you do this? I believe so. That's why I'm here, to help you. Jim, you and everybody else, you guys, my students, I totally believe you can do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a business. If I didn't believe in you, forget about it. There's nothing I can do. Make sense? Yeah. Now, I mentioned the workshop. Let me just tell you briefly. I don't want to turn this into a sales pitch or anything, but I do let you guys know, I wanted to let you know, that in January, we talked about the funnel, setting up your lead generation systems. I figured the best way, the most effective way, rather than me shooting a bunch of videos for you or sending you emails, is if we, you and I work on it together. If I personally help you build these systems together. We're just like the expireds I showed you right now. What if we spent an entire two days building it? 
where you will know exactly what to say on the phone. You will know exactly what to say in person. You will know the sequence. What do I mail them? What, how do I follow up with them? What do I say on the phone that will get me the appointment? Do I text them? And if I do, what do I text them? So we're going to take it in these little baby steps and I'll walk you through the whole system. And then we'll get on the phone, first we'll role play, we'll practice some dialogues. And once you get the hang of it, we'll go on an actual phone and talk to some expired listings so you know how it works in real life. So we're going to do this on day one with expireds and we're going to do the same thing with FISBOS. So if that's something that you think would benefit you, my challenge to every single one of you, you guys my students, is to do one listing a week. 50, 50 week, 50 listing challenge. In order for you to get there, you will need these systems, obviously, to generate these leads. And I figured the best, quickest way for you to get up and running is with the high probability leads, which are FISBOs and expireds. So in January, on 21st and 22nd, Thursday and Friday in January, we're going to spend two days in Vegas, and that's what we're going to work on. We're going to start in the morning, put this all together. But not just theory. This is not just going to be you sitting there taking notes. That'll be part of it. But you're going to bring your computer, you're going to bring your phone, and we're going to actually go to work. So by the time you're done, by Friday night, before we hit the bars <laughs> and casinos, you're going to have these things in place. That is my goal. Now, this is a small group because I want you to ask a lot of questions. I want to personally interact with you. I want to tailor these things specifically to your personality, your experience, and your market. So I keep the group very small. There are going to be probably 70, 75 agents in the room tops. So this way it's going to be very intimate. It's not going to be this giant hall where you're going to see in the distance some dude on the stage. But it'll be me right there in the trenches with you. So if that's something you want to consider, come on board. It's only we have an $197 is the ticket. And we have an early bird special for the next, I think, two weeks. That $50 discount. So it's $147. Definitely worth the investment if you ask me. Okay? Okay. Are we good? Are we done, Jim? You have your work cut out for you now. It's time to do some planning, do a little strategy session, get out your calendar, start planning these things, and put it to work. Yes. Yes. Um, you're, um, you're awesome. <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate your, your wisdom and your expertise, and, you know, I like to learn from, you know, good people like you, and I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't put this to work a couple years ago, uh, but like you said, you can't uh, you you can't expect buyers you can't expect to make a living on on, on buyer leads. All right, Jim. Hey, thanks very much. Time well spent. I enjoyed it very much. You guys, thanks very much for watching. You need anything? You have a question? I'm just an email away. It's borino at expireplus.com. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll talk to you real soon, and hopefully, I'll see you guys in Las Vegas in January. Thanks for being here. Let's go get him, Coach Borino. Signing off. Have a good one. Bye.